Hello friends, in this video on Organic Chemistry Basics Part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will learn electron movement in organic reaction. Before that, let's do some pre work. Let's uh, revise some of the concepts. For example, the methane structure is something like this I have my carbon and I have these four uh, orbitals, and these, these are all sp3 orbitals, sp3 hydroorbitals, and these are all linked to. Hydrogens, right? You talk about methane. So I have my carbon, sp2 orbitals, sp2 this is a p orbital here, and these p orbitals form a double bond, right? And these these uh, these are these are all my sp2. We talk about ethane. This is all sp hybrid orbitals. This is my sp hybrid. This is my sp hybrid, and this is my p, and this is my p. So if you see these p orbitals form double bond and this is one sigma bond this is totally triple bond and these are all my single bond correct also this is my normal uh, ch3 this is a normal ch3 radical free radical ch3 free radical with no charge so here if you see the structure so as i told this is all sp3 hybridized sp3 sorry sp2 this is my sp2 this is my sp2 and this is my sp2 so here we see all these uh, 3 sp2 hybrid orbitals are linked to hydrogen and this guy p orbital has one electron. This is my CH3 radical. The moment we talk about CH3 minus, right? This is sp3 hybridized. So if you see in this case, 3 are linked to hydrogen and the other sp3 hybrid orbital will have two electrons, right? And then talk about CH3 plus. This guy is also sp2 hybrid orbitals. We have discussed these in the last few slides. And this is a p orbital, and this is an empty p orbital. Please note, there's an empty p orbital in in CS3 plus. There's a p orbital with one electron in CS3 free radical, and in CS3 minus, there's a orbital which is not p but is sp3 orbital with a two electron. Right. So the concept here is it has CS3 plus will have a zero electron in this orbital. There will be here it will have one electron in this p orbital and here it will have two electron in this sp3 orbital correct zero electron one electron two electron cs3 plus cs3 free radical and cs3 so this is the basic concept before we understand the electron movement in an electronic organic reaction so the movement of two electrons can be showed by a curve arrow notation please note two electrons example this you see there are two electrons which are forming this pi bond and the moment you write this arrow that means two electrons are going to this y actually this y right and if you see in this case there's a two there's a bond here so this two electrons move from here to here so if you see the electrons which moved i am drawing in the red it moved from here to here for example if you see this is my CH2 double bond CH CH plus. Here, if you want, so if you see this electrons, right? These electrons, two electrons, which forms the bond between carbon one and carbon two, you can shift it to this side. You can shift that. So what will happen in this case? This will form actually CH2. Since I am taking out the electron from this, it is a positive charge. The bond will go and this will get a double bond here. This is what you get. So let me draw this how it happens. So this is a propene actually uh, with a propene cation actually. So let me draw this. I have my this I'm drawing this structure now. I have carbon here, carbon here, and carbon here. Three carbons. Correct. So let me this is a CH2. So let me draw this guy here. this and this is this with hydrogen actually this is this will join with hydrogen and this guy will also join with hydrogen correct and this guy will have a double bond this orbital and this is the MTP orbital actually this is the MTP orbital sorry this is my P orbital right these are my, these are the, the dash is the sp2 orbital actually 
correct similarly here also it will have sp2 orbital so one is this guy right and one is this guy and one it forms with this one hydrogen there's a hydrogen here right so i'll draw all the sp2 with this dash actually and this one p orbital name p orbital will be here this is my p orbital this is one orbital actually this carbon will be also have sp2 so this is one sp2 this is one this is one right and there will be a p orbital there correct so dash is my sp sorry this dash is my sp2 so this dash is my sp2 orbital or oh, let me change color the p orbital i am putting in green this is one p orbital dash this is p orbital right three p orbitals actually is in green the p orbital is in green and the red is sp2 correct this is the structure actually and since this is ch2 so what will happen is this will have one atom this will have one atom and this is a positive charge as i told it will not have any atom correct in last slide we have seen ch2 if you see this carbon 2 4 Six and seven, eight. If you see, this is how it will get satisfied. It will form a double bond. Actually, if you see, there will be a double bond. This is a, a double bond here. These will also merge. Actually, right? This is how the structure of this particular methane is. Right? This carbon, if you see, carbon one. This is carbon two. This is carbon three. So carbon one has two, four, six atom in this, uh, and plus two from this pi orbital. This carbon atom also has two from pi orbital, two from here, four. Six, eight. This is also hydrogen here. This is hydrogen here. This is hydrogen here. Correct. So this is satisfied now. So now what will happen is what I'm trying to say is so there will be shifting of electrons. Correct. And there is a positive charge here. So the shifting of electron. I'm saying is this particular electron, the one in green. Let me change the color. This electron actually, there are two electrons now, blue and green. The one in the blue will move. The one in the blue will move to this guy. Correct. The one in the blue will move to this guy, and now see now this is the structure. This guy has a positive charge. This all are these two, carbon one, carbon two, neutral carbon three is having a positive charge, right? This is an empty p orbital. If you see, as I told, empty p orbital means positive charge. And if you have one electron, that means you are neutral. And if you don't have two electrons, that means you have a negative charge. Right? This this electron will move from here to here. Correct. Now what will happen is this guy will have two electrons. It will get a negative charge, and this guy will have not have any electron, so it will give a positive charge. So this guy let me draw. Since electron move from here to here, this guy will get a positive charge. This is, sorry, this guy already had a positive charge. This carbon three. So this one. Electron moved from carbon one to carbon two, so carbon one got a negative positive charge and carbon two got a negative charge. Hope you understand. Correct. So now what what will happen is since this guy has two electrons and this guy is not having electron, they'll bond, they'll form a bond and they'll form a double bond and this charge will go off. And thus you'll get this kind of structure. See C plus then you have single bond C and then double bond C. Let me draw the structure. Actually, let me draw the same structure. How it will look after the transfer of electron? Let me draw the structure somewhere here. Now, this is how it will look. Actually, you see that this electron from carbon one, this carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, has moved to carbon two. This carbon two will have two electrons. This will not have any electrons. It will get a positive charge. It will get a negative charge, right? Since this guy has two electrons, this is not having electron. They'll form a bond. They'll form a bond, and you'll get a double bond here, right? And since it has got plus, it'll get a plus charge. So this is the actual thing which is happening. So when you draw a uh, arrow like this, you actually move two electrons. But this is how it happens. Uh, this bond is nothing but two electrons, right? And there's a transfer of electron actually, right, from here to here. So this guy gets negative charge, this positive charge, and now this guy has two electron. 
right? This guy has no electron, but you need one, two electron only to form a bond. So it will form a bond with this. It will form a bond with this. It will become a, a double bond. This positive charge is gone because to form, when it forms a bond, this two charges are gone, right? They form a bond. And then this guy becomes positive charge. So this is the logic for the electron movement. This is how and why we usually flow electrons from here to here. Correct? Hope you understand. So each of these, these guys, these guys have one electron, this person having electron positive charge. This electron moved from here to here, this became positive because it, it was having no electron now. This guy became negative because it got two electron now. This is negative, this is positive, this is two electrons, zero electron. They formed a bond, right? A pi bond, and thus you got a pi bond here. Now, the, we'll talk about moment of electron, single electron. So last time we talked about moment of two electrons, right? So now if we talk about single electron, if you see, so if I have a Rx, right, alkyl halide, so in presence of heat or light, this breaks actually, and each of these gets one electron. There also we have the same concept, right? Each of these get one electron, and this is denoted by fish hook. And if you want to see how it looks, this is my CH3 Cl actually, right? So now what happened is in presence of light, this becomes a CH3 dot and Cl dot. CH3 free radical, if you see, this is a free radical, it has one electron, no charge, and Cl also it has one electron and no charge. So this has become CH3 free radical and Cl free radical. This is the electron movement in an organic reaction. Now the next question that comes that, that should come to our mind is why do we electron move? I mean, we told that told electron move and it moved in this fashion. But the question is why electron is not stable? Why it move? Why it has to move? Right? So, there are so many reasons for that. There are some temporary effect, there is some permanent effect, inductive effect, resonance, hyperconjunction. We will study that. So you see, that it happens generally because of one is the permanent effect. That is nothing but my inductive effect, uh, resonance and hyperconjugation. And the other is my temporary effect. These are my electromagnetic effect. So we will talk about these effects, right? So we will talk about inductive effect, electromagnetic effect, resonance effect, and hyper. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.